Good evening. Three weeks ago, the American spacecraft Discovery One left on its half billion mile voyage to Jupiter. This marked the first manned attempt to reach this distant planet. Earlier this afternoon, the. Sci-fi is full of impossible dreams and things that move thinking on and that's what we want to achieve with a season like this. We had wanted to work with Jadwell Bank for a really long time and we knew that the British Film Institute were developing the sci-fi season. So it just made a lot of sense to do a, a fabulous preview marquee event here. So this is the first half of time we've done any cinema events here. It's pretty exciting, it's an experiment for us. It had to be sci-fi. The thing here is we, we don't see a gap between science and culture. What was exciting for us, apart from just having the, the film here at all, was uh, that there's a really strong connection between uh, Stanley Kubrick, the director, and Bernard Lovell, who was the uh, first director of this observatory. Um, he was interviewed by, by Kubrick's team before they made the film. They're going to make a prologue, basically. They're going to put it in front of the, 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 the film in, in the cinema, um, where they wanted these scientists to sort of explain that the themes were not um, you know, they, they weren't sort of tosh, you know, they were sort of real, there was real science behind what they were discussing. And then we found out about this Kubrick connection and we said straight away, okay, there's something that we need to do here. And that was when we talked to the Kubrick estate, we found out about uh, this transcript and the lost film and uh, I super collected to respond to that in some way. We've been asked to produce a 15 minute film that's going to be projected onto the dish tonight. So we came to Jodrell Bank and um, got some of the staff from Jodrell Bank to do read throughs of this transcript and sort of embody Lovell. Could be the less important. And it just gets you going, it gets you excited about space again. A soup collective. I want to see that. That's why I'm here. The soundtrack that's been done by Graham Massey, especially incorporating loads of interviews and stuff, it, it just um, really came alive. I asked you astrophysics and I thought the questions that they posed were really interesting. I guess it makes more sense to have a circular film than a rectangular one. I've never really thought about it before, but that, that kind of made more sense to me. You ran into it where we did. It's only important that it was a week after my 17th birthday in September 1965 and I was taken on as a runner, you know, gopher. I mean, working for him was a, right up until the end, was just a, a kind of intellectual Catherine wheel. It's quite, quite mind-bending, yes. really. Yes. And then it takes you out of yourself a bit, really. Yes. And in some ways puts everything in perspective. I want to see it receiving some messages from the big black obelisk. Yeah. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, it's a really surreal film. It's a really surreal film. I forgot how creepy Hal is. So, I mean, this is a big, a big wow experience for me coming up and seeing it um, in the open air and on a big screen at Jodrell Bank. I mean, it's, uh, we should have done this earlier. When we first started trying to develop the programme for here, we contacted one of Truck's Point Never. He experiments a lot with synths and celestial loops, and what we have is magnetic rows. And I think it's brilliant in terms of a, a shorter film to precede Alien, because they're both about you know, the sort of psychological mind space of women. We're sort of hoping that when we do make contact with these extraterrestrials, it's not in the style of the film we're showing tonight. It's the sort of film where the first time you watch it, you sort of scared to turn the light off for a bit. It's, it's going to be the best one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So with other fans, yeah. lots of other fans. I've never actually seen Alien before. Yeah. I love Alien, it's awesome. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. I was kind of, I was kind of hoping it'd rain a little bit. The setting's just absolutely wonderful, I thought. The film's perfect, I love Alien, it's a great film anyway, and yeah, the weather was a little bit chilly. But um, yeah, I think it just added to, to the atmosphere of the place, really, yeah. The giant picture of Ripley 
on, behind on the satellite. And when that scene synced up on the actual screen, geek heaven. Oh, it was fabulous. It was great to be with a big crowd here at Jodrell Bank and watching it in the open air. Although it's cold, it's brilliant to have the stars above as well. Chilly, uh, but yeah, wicked. Great place to watch sci-fi. I'd definitely come and see another film here. Uh, bring a lot of layers. Yeah, bring, <laughs> bring a lot of layers. And, um, but it was a really good experience, my first outdoor cinema. So I think people came for the main character, which is a radio telescope. I think people come for the experience, the sight, and then complement that with a brilliant film. So I think it was a combination. It's not just one or other. It's seeing a film at Jodwell Bank that, and seeing a film that relates to the site in some way. No, I always keep saying, when, when the aliens land on Earth, don't go to Central Park. Come here. We'll have them here at Jodwell Bank. 